Hey everybody, you're watching a physio named Jonah. That's this guy. In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down what I believe to be are the five best things about being a physiotherapist. This obviously means this is a subjective list because they're what I believe to be the five best things are. Honestly, I love my job. There are a lot of great things about being a physiotherapist, and I feel very fortunate that it's what I get to do for my day-to-day -day work on a weekly basis. Nothing is perfect, and I've talked about that before, but being a physiotherapist is something that I really, really love. For today, let's live on the bright side as I count down what I believe to be are the five best things about being a physiotherapist. Quick disclaimer note here right before we get started, I work as an outpatient practice physiotherapist with a primarily musculoskeletal population, so obviously my favorite things are going to be fairly related to being an outpatient clinician who works with musculoskeletal conditions. Let's get started. Number five, the material. What material means here is what we study as physiotherapists, this being the human body and how it moves. This is the bread and butter of physiotherapy and I think a really big part about what makes it great. How people move is incredibly fascinating. The remarkable coordinated symphony orchestra of nerves, muscles, joints that has to happen for somebody to move, how this affects performance, how this affects pain, it's all really really interesting and I love to nerd out about it on a regular basis at work. The human body is so beautifully designed and frustratingly complicated that it makes the study of it something you can devote your entire life to. And in doing so, know that you're always going to come across something new to learn, a new layer to kind of peel back because there's just so many layers of complexity and so many ways of looking how it functions and how it moves. Speaking of always learning new things, number four, learning new skills. I'm a young physiotherapist at the time of recording this video. I've been out practicing for just under two years at this point, oh just over two years, nice! I can remember back to being a student and learning all the different techniques, all the different exciting new theories, and really looking forward to applying that to patients. It's exciting to think about how this was going to all interact with real people in the real world after what you learned in school. What you learn as a student on placement though, or as a young clinician starting your career, is that the things that you learned in school are kind of just the tip of the iceberg in any given area of physiotherapy. There are a lot of different continuing education courses and a lot of increased depth that you can dive into on any given field within physiotherapy. Personally, I find this ability to kind of turn yourself into whatever kind of healthcare practitioner you want to be through the courses that you take afterwards to be really, really interesting and awesome, just to be frank, because it means you can become the kind of healthcare practitioner that you want to be in a way that you personally identify with because you've taken courses that you're interested in. Number three, individuality of practice. I'm being a bit on the nose with my transitions today, huh? There are many fields of physiotherapy. This in and of itself lends itself to a lot of individual variability between clinicians because where you work and the population you work with is really going to change what your day-to-day -day practice looks like. On top of this though, something that I really love and find interesting is the individual differences between clinicians that practice even within the same field and within the same clinic. I work as an outpatient orthopedic physiotherapist, which means that I work in one of those clinics that you usually see on the side of the road. The kind of place that you go if you have pain or you're having trouble doing something physical. I'm one of those physios. Within these types of clinics that I've worked in professionally or been placed at as a student, there's a lot of individual variability between practitioners. When someone comes to see me, I get to decide what the best course of treatment is for them, obviously using my educational and clinical backgrounds. I think that this ability to treat patients in a way that I personally and professionally identify with leads to better care because as physios we're more directly invested in the care that we're delivering because we believe in it. We've chosen to administer the treatment or practice in a way that we identify with personally and believe will be helpful. And all of this happens in the pursuit of number two, problem solving. In the same way that physiotherapists differ from one another, patients are so unique from each other. I mean, we're human beings, we're all very, very different. 
As the physiotherapist, I get to apply clinical reasoning principles and past clinical experiences to come up with a diagnosis or root of the problem for what that specific patient is presenting me with. This obviously in coordination with whatever healthcare practitioners that patient is also seeing. In order to address individual problems, we think of patterns as clinicians that occur across people in clinical patterns, anatomical ones, psychological ones, all to try and get to the root of what's going on for that individual. This process of problem solving and applying these patterns can be daunting and pretty frustrating as a young physio, but if you can get to the root of those problems in the tricky situations, it is incredibly rewarding and definitely one of my favorite parts of being a physiotherapist. All right, let's make this personal. As a kid, I always loved puzzle solving games. Did I get frustrated and cried a lot of them? Yes, but I don't know who told you that, probably my mom. Being presented with a puzzle that doesn't always have a clear solution may require some lateral thinking or kind of ways to get around it to find that solution. Man, those are just so rewarding and fun. One of my favorite games as a kid was the rush hour games, where you have a grid system with a lot of cars, I'll put a picture over there, all driving around, you have to get the one red car out of a hole, and it required a lot of lateral thinking, moving things around. I realize that this whole thing may sound pretty dorky or lame, but honestly, getting to clinically reason or problem solve in the interest of helping my patients get better, it's just the best. Number one, working with patients. That's a four out of four for on the nose transitions, I would say. This is a pretty obvious one to me, but maybe that's because this is my top five best list. Working with patients is always the source of my best days of being a clinician. There is nothing better about being a physiotherapist than getting to watch someone get better, improve, have less pain, be able to do more of their life. Seeing the change that happens in someone's life from being in pain, unable to do something, and the effect that that has on them, to then go to being able to do something, being less in pain, and how much life can improve because of that, it is so rewarding. Getting to be a part of that is incredibly special to me. Even the really difficult times of patient care are still some of what I consider best part of being a physiotherapist. There are some times when patients are pretty emotional. People can get frustrated, people can get angry, people can cry about how something is just not working for them or they're in pain. And this is usually a really big part of their recovery. These are really difficult times for people. And the fact that I get to be there for them as a therapist, help them through it, help them try and realize what the underlying problem is, how can we maybe solve that? That is so rewarding and again, I think really, really special. I love that I get to be a part of those moments too. To get a touch deeper here, I have always known that I wanted to be in a position, in a job where I got to help others. And I get to do that as a physiotherapist. I get to help someone move better. I get to help someone have less pain. That is exactly the kind of thing that I personally always wanted to have in my job and I feel really, really lucky that I get to have that as part of what I do every day. As with any job, there are difficult parts about being a physio and things that don't belong on a best list. I'll address those at a later time. But being there for patients, seeing how they improve, seeing how movement can impact and change somebody's life, that is undoubtedly the best part of being a physiotherapist to me. And again, I feel so lucky to have this job. Thanks, Luna. Thanks for checking in. If you stuck around to this point in the video, thank you guys very much for watching. I honestly appreciate the support and I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that knowing my five favorite things about being a physio helps you understand the profession a little more, uh, the practice if you work with a physiotherapist, reflect on your own favorites as a physio, or help you think about physio if you're considering becoming a physiotherapist. Some ways you can help support my channel are clicking that subscribe button below so that you're notified when I release new videos. If you enjoyed this one and would like to see others like it, you can hit the thumbs up button to let YouTube know that you enjoyed this video. But most importantly, as always guys, move your body, have a laugh today, and I will see you at the next video.